Hi everyone, Aiden here with eTrailer.com. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at the Yakima Ridgeback hanging style bike rack here on our 2022 Toyota Highlander. Now, this rack is gonna hold the bike by the frame hanging down like this. So it's not gonna be great for our carbon frame bikes just because it's gonna be putting a lot of pressure on the frame. You can see we've got three points of contact, two on the top and one on the seat post here, which is going to help with our back and forth movement, keep that bike to bike contact to a minimum. There is some movement, but it is going to limit it quite a bit. Because of this style, you are gonna to wanna to watch out for any alternative frame bikes or kids bikes as well. You will probably need an adapter bar to make that work. If you've got the budget for it, I'd maybe recommend going for a platform style rack because of that, just so you don't have to pick up any extra parts, but it's really just down to your preferences and what you need most. Now with it like this, loaded up with one bike, we've got a 40 pound capacity, but if the whole rack is fully loaded, it's at 150 pound capacity, so just keep that in mind with your bikes. I'm gonna go ahead and get the bike unloaded here, starting with this seat post strap. You can see we've got two buttons on either side and we can just lift that strap out of place. Pretty easy to do. And I like how well padded all of that is. Then from here, we can just lift the bike up and off and set it to the side. That is one downside of a hanging style rack is that to get hatch access, we will need to unload all the bikes to be able to tilt the rack away. I'm going to put these back in place since they are just kind of freestanding. I like to keep them installed. That way I don't lose them. And then from here, we can actually come to this black lever and you can see that the whole rack tilts away, giving us full and clear access to our vehicle. Now, really, if you're just going to be driving to the trail and back or to your biking destination and back and that's the only time you're gonna stop, then it really doesn't matter. You'll unload your bikes, get what you need out of the back and go and hit the trail. It only really becomes an issue if you're maybe taking your bikes on a long trip and at a random stop at the gas station you need to access, that might be a bit of a headache. But overall, it's not too bad. Now from here, let's actually get some measurements. It's going to stick out from the back of your Highlander about 40 inches. So that is going to add a bit of distance here. You're gonna to wanna to watch out for parking spaces and especially with your garage. But when the bikes aren't loaded, you can come to this gray lever at the top and fold those arms down. That's gonna save a ton of space. Cutting that distance added down to 13 inches. So if you've got the room in your garage, you might be able to close the door behind this and it's gonna be a lot less obtrusive in those parking spots. Now down at the bottom, we're gonna check out our ground clearance. That's gonna be 14 and a half inches to the bottom of the anti-rattle knob here. Now, it does sit so close to your vehicle at this point, I don't think we'll have many clearance issues. Just keep in mind that it's back there. Speaking of that anti-rattle knob, it is tool free, so you can just twist it to the right to tighten it or to the left to loosen it. It's gonna keep everything nice and solid in the hitch there, and it's lockable. So we can keep the bike rack secure and nice and stable in the hitch. It'll work with an inch and a quarter or a two inch hitch with the included adapter like we have installed here. And overall, it's gonna be a great way to get yourself and three other bikes to your destination. If you've got a family and you wanna have a lot of bikes in your Highlander here, this is a great way to do it. And it's gonna keep the cost down to a more manageable amount. Thanks for watching. Here it is on our test course. We'll start by going through the slalom. This is gonna show us the side to side action, which simulates turning corners or evasive maneuvers. Next, we're at the alternating speed bumps, which we'll see the twisting action. This will simulate hitting a curb or pothole or driving over uneven pavement. And finally, we have the full speed bumps, where we'll see the up and down action, which is just like driving out of a parking lot, garage, or driveway.